i7 14700K or Xeon W93595X. Try saying that 10 times fast. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Unless you work at Intel or handle their processors and chipsets every day, keeping up with their naming conventions can be tricky. If all that sounded like gibberish, don't worry, this is the video for you. Hey everyone, I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and in this episode, we're looking at Intel's processors and chipsets and demystifying their long, confusing names. Let's start with processors. Intel processors generally break their names down into five parts. Brand name, brand modifier, or processor level, generation indicator, SKU number, and product line suffix. So let's go through them one at a time. Brand name. Intel has many processor brand names like Intel Processor, Intel Core, and Intel Core Ultra. Intel Xeon is not widely known to most consumers, but provides higher level performance intended for servers and workstations. Then comes the brand modifier or processor level. Intel uses a tiered system of brand modifiers to indicate whether a workstation or client processor is for entry level, mainstream, or high end performance. Think i5, i7, i9. Generally, the higher the number, the better the performance. Next, we have the generation indicator. For most Intel processors, the first number following the brand modifier or processor level shows which generation it's a part of. For instance, the Intel Core i7-14700 is 14th gen. Intel processor and Intel Core i3-N series don't have a generation indicator, and for Xeon 6 and later, the generation is the first digit of its four number sequence. For instance, the Intel Xeon 6960P is sixth generation. For most Intel processors, the SKU number follows the generation number, giving more detailed identification for the brand and generation. Generally, a higher SKU number means a product with more features. Examples include the Intel Core Ultra 5 processor 245KF or the Intel Xeon Platinum 8558P. The last part of the name is the product line suffix, which indicates what the processor was designed for. There's a long list of suffixes and what they mean. Suffixes you are likely to come across for desktop include K, meaning a high performance processor that has been unlocked for overclock, or KF, which is the same as K, just without the integrated graphics. For laptops, P stands for power optimized for thin and light laptops, or H slash HK slash HX means highest performance. Okay, to sum up processor names, it's brand name, processor level, generation indicator, SKU number, and suffix. Now that we've got the processor name down, let's move on to chipsets. First, what is a chipset? A chipset manages data flow between the processor, memory, and other components. Each chipset is built to work with specific processor sockets for compatibility between the CPU and motherboard. Some chipsets may support multiple generations of processors, but it's important to verify compatibility to ensure proper functionality. Some examples of Intel chipset names are Z790 or B760. The first letter in the chipset's name represents the series, and there are four possible options. Z series are high performance, H series are mid-tier for everyday use, B series are budget friendly, and Q series are specialized for enterprise environments. The second digit in the sequence represents the chipset's generation. The Z790 belongs to the 700 series, designed to support Intel's 13th and 14th gen core processors. New generations support the latest tech and improve on performance and efficiency. The last two digits in the sequence represent the feature set. A higher number means more features or better performance. For example, Z series usually have higher numbers than B series chipsets. So to recap, chipset names include a letter to represent the series, the generation number, and the feature set. Okay, demystifying Intel naming conventions 101 completed. So tell us, are you considering a self-build with an Intel processor and chipset? Which combination are you thinking about choosing? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future tech tips. I will see you next time with more DIY in 5. So what are we looking at here? We've got a core, it could be a fruit core, it could be Earth's core. Then followed by I7 is this type of vehicle, maybe an interstate. We have here some type of raptor standing on a lake followed by a postal code. And then there's a K at the end, which could stand for Kelvin, potentially a kilometer. Hmm?